This week on Vaticano, Pope Francis ordains 10 new priests and calls all young people to actively seek their own vocations. This Catholic leader from Syria makes an appeal for peace, and we join the Pope for the celebration of his name day. He also hosts the general audience while Latin American and U.S. Latino Catholics look to realize their duty to evangelize. All this plus Gloria Estefan and other public figures speak on religious freedom. We take another look at the Shroud of Turin and this seven-foot-tall NBA star stops in to the Swiss Guard for a visit. All this coming up. Here in St. Peter's Basilica on April the 21st, Pope Francis ordained 10 deacons to the priesthood. It was the Feast of the Good Shepherd, and these men of the Diocese of Rome were given the Sacrament of Holy Orders by their own pastor, the Pope. Fratelli e figli dilettissimi, che state per essere... Now, my dear brothers and sons, you are raised to the order of the priesthood. For your part, you will exercise the sacred duty of teaching in the name of Christ the Teacher. Impart to everyone the Word of God, which you have received with joy. Remember your mothers, your grandmothers, your catechists, who gave you the Word of God, the faith, the gift of faith. They transmitted to you this gift of faith. Meditating on the law of the Lord, see that you believe what you read, that you teach what you believe, and that you practice what you teach. Remember, too, that the Word of God is not your property. It is the Word of God, and the Church is the custodian of the Word of God. Francis emphasized the importance of being merciful as shepherds in the Church. You will gather others into the people of God through baptism and you will forgive sins in the name of Christ and the Church in the sacrament of penance. Today I ask you, in the name of Christ and the Church, never tire of being merciful. You will comfort the sick and the elderly with the holy oil. Do not hesitate to show tenderness towards the elderly. You are pastors, not functionaries. Be mediators, not intermediaries. Non intermediari. Each man accepted fully his vocation as a priest, vowing his obedience directly to the Pope and his successors. Incidentally, one of them was an Argentinian, just like Francis. There were also two Indians and a Croatian in the otherwise majority Italian group of Ordinandi. Lying prostrate and asking the grace of God through the intercession of the saints for their ministry. and receiving the laying on of hands and the prayers of the Pope that they be worthy ministers of the Word of God. Following Mass, Pope Francis offered a particular message to young people. Before the Regina Coeli prayer, he asked them to dedicate their youth to the greatest of ideals. Siete tanti giovani oggi qui in piazza. Vorrei chiedervi, qualche volta avete sentito la voce del Signore che attraverso un desiderio, un'inquietudine, vi invitava a seguirlo più da vicino? L'avete sentito? Non, non sento. Ecco. Avete avuto voglia di essere apostoli di Gesù? La giovinezza bisogna metterla in gioco per i grandi ideali. Pensate questo voi? Siete di accordo? Domanda a Gesù che cosa vuole da te e sii coraggioso, sii coraggiosa. Domandali. Syria is a battlefield today. You are in full security, let us say, in every place and you are in danger in any place because there is a battle of armed people, bandits, opposition, groups from outside, from inside, from east, west, 
you don't know with whom you have to do. There is a war without face and warriors without face. Patriarch Gregory Lahem III came to Roman part to brief the Pope on the situation in his war-torn country. He also wanted to thank Francis for his Easter message. It was during the Urbi et Orbi blessing that the Pope asked especially to pray for peace in Syria. Pace per la mata Syria. Above all, for dear Syria, for its people torn by conflict, for the many refugees who need help and comfort. How much blood has been shed and how much suffering must there be before a political solution is found? Here at the Melkite Greek headquarters in Rome, the Syrian leader told journalists Europe is supporting the war, which affects both Christians and Muslims. The fear for everybody is the same. I don't like to speak too much about Christians because we are citizens and as citizens we are facing the same fate as the others and as somehow we are less in danger than the Muslims because we are not a target. In a way we are a target but mostly the target is the whole people and uh, the, best, uh, the biggest fear is the chaos. Every place, as I said, is really in danger. And there is a war without end. And the most problematic is that the whole world is now occupied to see if we arm or we don't arm, if we deliver more or less weapons, to whom, where, and how, and so on. Less is the word of peace in the whole uh, discussions and meetings mostly is to give money, to give weapons, to fight here, to fight here, but less to let's say we have to make peace in Syria. And that is, I think, the most problem for us as Christians, as patriarchs, as people of peace. The world has to think about peace and not about weapons. tradition in the Vatican, the Pope's name day is celebrated as a holiday. Pope Francis' birth name, Jorge, translates to George in English, and it was the feast of the soldier saint on April 23rd. He marked the day with a mass with these, his brother cardinals, in the Vatican's Pauline Chapel. The Pope thanked them for their fraternal closeness and spoke to them about being inspired to share the faith. Pensiamo oggi alla let us think today about the missionary activity of the church. These people came out of themselves to go forth, even those who had the courage to proclaim Jesus to the Greeks, an almost scandalous thing at that time. Think of this mother church that grows, grows with new children to whom she gives the identity of the faith, because you cannot believe in Jesus without the church. Jesus himself says in the gospel, but you do not believe because you are not among my sheep. If we are not sheep of Jesus, faith does not come to us. It is a rosewater faith, a faith without substance. And let us think of the consolation that Barnabas felt, which is the sweet and comforting joy of evangelizing. And let us ask the Lord for this paresia, this apostolic fever that impels us to move forward, as brothers, all of us forward. Forward, bringing the name of Jesus in the bosom of Holy Mother Church and as St. Ignatius said, hierarchical and Catholic. So be it. The Pope's name day came just one day before the 8th anniversary of Benedict XVI's election. After the break, we'll catch up with some U.S. Latino Catholics as they discuss how to evangelize in a changing U.S. Welcome back, you're watching Vaticano. The Holy Father greeted around 100,000 people on hand for his general audience in St. Peter's Square. He then spoke to them on how to consider the final judgment. To bring fruits, the grace of God always requires our openness to Him, our free and concrete response. 
Christ comes to bring us the mercy of God that saves. To us, it is asked that we trust in Him, corresponding to the gift of His love with a good life, made up of acts inspired by faith and love. Dear brothers and sisters, looking to the final judgment ought not cause us fear. Rather, it should impel us to live the present better. God offers us this time with mercy and patience so that we might learn every day to recognize Him in the poor and the little ones, that we work for the good and be vigilant in prayer and love. May the Lord, at the end of our existence and of history, recognize us as His good and faithful servants. Thank you. The Pope also asked for prayers for peace in Syria as he closed his audience. The violence and weapons continue to reap death and suffering. I ask God to illumine the hearts. I renew the same invitation I made on the day of Easter, that the shedding of blood may cease. May the necessary humanitarian assistance be offered to the population and may a political solution to the crisis be found. The Easter season brought Catholic Latino leaders from the U.S. to the Vatican on pilgrimage. Here they are at the office for promoting the new evangelization during their third annual visit to Rome. Welcome to this Pontifical Council. We are very happy for this moment of encounter because, as you know, the new evangelization is new to the Catholic Church. Why a new evangelization? Because the society of the world is different. If we look at the world of the last 50 years, we must say that the world is truly modified. It's another world. Delegates were able to describe their reality and that of U.S. Latino Catholics to the Council. Catholic Association of Latino Leaders. The call stands for the Catholic Association of Latino Leaders. The main idea of the association is that Latinos who are professionals be more integrated into the Catholic Church, that they develop their knowledge of the faith, that they grow as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ and share their faith with their families and the people with whom they work, and ultimately, that they influence American society with Christian values. First immigrant travels to the United States, they are pretty solid in their faith, and they look for refu refuge in the church, and they find a strong community there. They celebrate the sacraments, they congregate around the churches, and they truly live their faith. When they try to explain their faith to the children, that's when the problem comes. Everything celebrates around the sacraments. We have First Communions, we have, we have the baptisms, we have the marriages, and it's a wonderful party. But when the second immigration of Hispanics go into the educational system in the United States, those are the problems that we're facing. They are being challenged and they don't have answers for their faith. So part of the mission of CALL, of the Catholic Association of Latino Leaders, is to form the Hispanic business leaders in the knowledge and understanding of their faith. Cal estimates that there are over 70 million Latino Catholics in the United States. With the support of the Vatican, they are looking for ways to protect their faith for the future. In the face of relativism and a very strong individualism, we have to remember that the identity of the believer is a communitarian identity. It's an identity of belonging to a community, and this community is the church. It is the community where we live and are reflected. The one-month anniversary of Pope Francis' pontificate was marked with joy here at the Pontifical Commission for Latin America. According to their vice president, a layman from Uruguay, they were expecting nothing less than an Argentinian pope. To tell the truth, there are a lot of people who say nowadays that they thought it could have been Bergoglio. My wife and I, on the other hand, I can assure you truly that we had the spiritual conviction that Cardinal Bergoglio was going to be pope. 
So much so that before the conclave, I told a few friends. At the beginning of the conclave, I treated my wife to dinner at the Hotel Columbus to celebrate in advance the pontificate of Cardinal Bergoglio. Perhaps it was a little impertinent, because we needed to allow the Holy Spirit and the extraordinary docility of the cardinals in the conclave to do their work. He believes that the election of a Latin American pope translates into a special responsibility for Catholics from that part of the globe. It is an unprecedented event in the bimillenary history of the Church. It's really impressive that arouses a joy and a great astonishment and strong enthusiasm. We Latin Americans are very conscious that beyond these initial reactions, the fact of having a Latin American Pope has meaning and comes with great duties and responsibilities for all of the Church there. The Church in Latin America cannot rest on its laurels. They need to begin to think this through deeply and pray to find out what God is asking of them in this moment in history. God's providence has put the Church there in a situation that is quite singular and it must take advantage of it. Coming up after a short commercial break, Gloria Stefan is in Rome to support religious freedom. And this basketball giant visits the Swiss Guards. Welcome back. You're watching Vaticano. The theme Religious Liberty Today brought world famous people to Rome this month to share their ideas. I do love songs, I do dance songs, but I always put out there the thoughts that we are all connected, that uh, God is love, that love is everything that moves the world, that we're all responsible for creating our realities, and that, that it's important that each of us uh, be better human beings and, and try to empower and have people feel positive and stronger, and the things that music did for me when I was growing up. This event was focused on religious freedom, and I think what they thought they were going to get from me was a sense of religious freedom in relationship to the science religion question. But in practice, that's not really the issue. I thought, and what I hoped to give to them, was a sense of what religion can learn from science about how to treat the freedom of ideas without losing the credibility of ideas that you really believe are true. Since 1984, the nonprofit group TED, which stands for Technology Entertainment Design, has been inviting speakers to present talks on ideas worth spreading in 18 minutes or less. More recently, they've been lending their name to independent groups in the world seeking to deepen understanding on various themes, thus the Roman conference named after the street leading up to St. Peter's, TEDx Via della Conciliazione. What interests us is the present, especially looking towards the future. We have to build something. We have to build a world full of brotherhood, full of solidarity, and, of course, religion has a lot to say. For this reason, religion needs to live in freedom. It is a fundamental right for human beings. As such, this TEDx conference is not trying to be a platform for speaking of one specific religion, but to speak of the universal right to religion and freedom of religion. We often focus on the things that we kind of make conflict over or disagree upon or the challenges, but do we really understand what's going on out there? How actually me being present in the city, in this room here, engaging with people, we're exploring things that actually we can all say, you know what, we, we're feeling the same things, we're going through the same issues, we're going through the same struggles. As people who are struggling in the modern society today with, with faith and you know, the purpose of our existence and trying to find a meaning and navigate through the madness of life. I think traditionally uh, in Western country, uh, in Europe, um, uh, proclaim the freedom for religion. Um, well, it's different from in China um, because uh, China, the policy is the freedom of religious belief. I think there is a difference, freedom of religion or freedom uh, of uh, religious belief because the difference is uh, in personal, you believe something that's as an individual is okay. But uh, freedom of religion is you can, you can promote religion. Mm, that's my understanding. All of the talks were recorded and are being made available on YouTube. Here 
at Rome's Lateran University foremost experts on the Holy Shroud gathered this month. A constant theme in their circles is the origins of the linen garments that possibly covered Jesus Christ in the tomb. The forum offered them the chance to continue an ongoing debate. We have uh, very clear and sure news only starting from uh, 14th century. Uh, but uh, we have uh, some notices uh, uh, related to the previous centuries which uh, can give us some ideas that uh, the shroud can be uh, really the shroud uh, of Christ and uh, that uh, his trip uh, was along uh, old uh, um, actual Turkey and from about the beginning of the 13th century it was translated to Europe. But fortunately we have the shroud and so we can study it uh, not uh, starting from not sure uh, historical hypotheses but from uh, direct exam and analysis made on the cloth which can give us more sure and definite uh, information. The most recent investigations of the shroud haven't added much to what was already known. Today, I would say that it is scientifically verified, beyond what a recent carbon-14 test reported, which is not reliable. We have so many elements that tell us that this sheet was the one in which Christ was wrapped. One only need to look to the examination done by a crime scene investigator without any religious affiliation. That gave us certainty that the pollen on the shroud is a mix from the basin of Jerusalem, the basin of Constantinople, and from the Alps. So it covers the route that the shroud would have historically taken. These recent studies, done after the carbon dating, in a certain way, do justice and take us back to the certainty of the ancient date. So, they show that we can look at the shroud, study it, and meditate on it, knowing that you are meditating on the Passion of Christ. A source of devotion for Catholics and a fascinating snapshot of history for anyone, the shroud attracts much attention worldwide. It's housed in Italy's Cathedral of Turin and is only put on display on rare occasions. There is no serious scientist today who would dare say that they have discovered how the image was formed. But for the person who is interested in the human event and interested in someone who died in that way and with that kind of suffering, especially because they see in them the suffering of our Savior, it can be seen that there is something vital and moving in the shroud. When I saw it for the first time, now 40 years ago, I went close to it. There was the possibility to touch it, but I didn't because I said, I'd like to go to paradise, but not in this very moment. But then the Lord wished that I might have the occasion and even the necessity to do so. As I handle it, I have to touch it all the time, though it's just the margins. Having contact with the shroud, I think it can be said, very seriously, that whoever touches this cloth has had contact also with the body of Christ taken down from the cross. Deposto dalla croce. The deep tradition of the pontifical Swiss guard has encountered that of the Los Angeles Lakers. Former Lakers center and world champion Vlade Divac paid a special visit to the barracks in April. It was just a brief tour while he was in town for the TEDx conference, and along the course they found they had some things in common. So you know what's interesting um, about Switzerland? It's a basketball club named by me in uh, St. Gallen or Lausanne. It's close. St. Gallen would be close at uh, my part of where I'm coming from. Yeah. It's, they play like in third league. It's uh, some um, Serbian-born people live there, so they organize a club. It's so they go up, but now they are in third division. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Basketball club, Vlade Divac. Really? Yeah, it's Fantastic. Amazing. And I was uh, very excited to be here, and uh, it turns out to be a great day, and uh, they have a basketball team here, very tall people. So I told them if they need coach, I can help them out, but that was exciting, you know, uh, history and uh, uh, people that uh, do a lot of hard work to protect uh, people in the Vatican and, uh, and Pope, so it's great, great experience. Well, personally, I'm a big basketball fan. I'm following the, the NBA since the 90s, 90s so uh, I have a pretty good idea uh, what happened at that time and who Vlade Divac was. So for me, it was an incredible personal meeting with him. 
And for him personally, also to know the Swiss Guards, to know our history, to, to see the other Swiss Guards, to meet other active Swiss Guards, he was uh, a very, um, yeah, he had a big pleasure also to have, to be here and to see how we live and how we do our uh, service to the Holy Father. It was awesome to have him here as we also tried to build up a little basketball team. We try to do maybe once a week, once uh, two weeks because of our schedule. It's fun to have a pro here and uh, to have this meeting, it was very awesome. It's the first time to meet um, uh, Swiss guards and I promised them, you know, because they gave me a jersey with, uh, with their, their, their logo and uh, number 21, this number that I wear in, uh, in Sacramento Kings. I promised them next time I come here, I'll give them an original jersey so they can put in their in their hall. As they say, if the jersey fits. Grazie, grazie. Grazie, grazie.